today is the first of many things. It's not only the first time I'm broadcasting a live session from the Southern Hemisphere uh, in this Facebook community. It's also the 1st of September. And September is a special time, especially for creative entrepreneurs. It's a time of transition. It's a lot happening, uh, whether you're in the Northern or Southern Hemisphere. It's a season where we're going towards the end of the year. And you think, well, that's still four months away. But these are important revenue months for artists, for creative entrepreneurs. Because we're heading towards Thanksgiving, Christmas, Santa Claus if you're in the Netherlands. And I know in Scandinavia, there's all kinds of uh, opportunities uh, for artists. Actually, all over the world, we're going into the season of giving. And uh, where people are far more open uh, to buy, to purchase, and to uh, uh, share gifts. So it's always a crucial part in, uh, in your, should be in your creative cycle. And it's still September, which I love because there's always space still to grow, to take steps. It's not like, oh, I need to get those prints out, I need those calendars done, I need to get those postcards and reproductions done, and it's already end of October. No, you are in September, and that's why I like at the beginning of this new season when the holidays are ending for some of us and uh, people are going back to school or to work or the um, new things are starting, is to do a season of designing your new art season because there's, you've got far more influence over that 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 you may think i'm just going to welcome the new uh, that i haven't welcomed yet marcia hello marcia good to uh, have you back and jan as always <laughs> also you're not down the road anymore good to have you here i see maya's here so welcome all uh, that have joined the session just briefly a little bit about myself um, and the help I'm artist uh, community is here to help to share to uh, connect with one another I try and be here live every week so that we can connect and share and also the conversations keep going in the group it's a growing group with different artists from different genres from all over the world and that's always exciting to see and I want to prepare these uh, sessions uh, depending on you know what's going on and as I said we are starting a new season now and so in September, we're going to be looking at planning, designing your new season and uh, how you can plan your next steps, your next launch, how to work in a collection, how you can prepare yourself when October, November, December comes along so that you're ready and that you have products or you have your paintings ready, you have them framed or photographed and elevated your website, you have prepared whatever you need to prepare so that you can present who you are and what you're doing to your audience. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this new series for the month of September. At the end of the month, we'll have a Q&A and uh, you can accumulate your questions and uh, we can have a QA and a at the end of our season. Of course, if you have questions in between, we can answer those too. My name is Sonia Small here. I'm originally from Cape Town, South Africa, lived in the Netherlands for 33 years, but now have moved to uh, back to Cape Town. It's something that we've been wanting to do many, many years, my husband and I, and finally this has been uh, has taken place. And we're here now for a few weeks and getting settled because we're building our office in our studio, so I don't have to sit in the kitchen all the time. Uh, so we'll have our recording studio that's being uh, made uh, for us uh, so we can have uh, a space to work. And that's lovely with the online space, you can just work anyway. So we just continue to do all these uh, sessions, the courses, the coaching, that all still stays takes place but then uh, in a different location. I'm an artist. I've been passionate about art since I can remember. And I've just been talking to my mom these last uh, few days and she was just saying how I, you know, I would draw and paint on absolutely everything. Maybe you can relate. Uh, I was drawing uh, before I was talking and it's just the way that I love to express myself. I uh, worked uh, in textile and on uh, uh, in fine arts. And uh, it, I've made it my passion to share with other artists uh, marketing and sales possibilities and I coach and I have courses about that so you can check out my website because that's my passion to help artists succeed. There are podcasts that are going to be starting up that's part of our uh, plan now for uh, our studio we're getting it starting with a new series we are uh, getting that sorted all the technicalities so there'll be a new podcast coming out so make sure you uh, have a look for those but there are if you haven't seen those Yet, there are a whole series of uh, podcasts on iTunes, on uh, Spotify, also on my website. It's called the Help I'm Artist podcast. 
And then the course that I was talking about that opens once a year in March. Uh, if you're not on the waitlist, please join the waitlist and I can keep you posted about what's going on, the dates, etc. And it really is a comprehensive course of 12 weeks where artists learn the A to Zs of art marketing. How can you not only make your art, but sell your art? And who, you know, who do you sell it to without feeling uncomfortable? How do you price your art? How do you communicate on your social channels, your website, all the things that are needed to um, enlarge your reach? So that is the course that's starting again uh, next year. But you are here in the Help I'm Artist the Facebook community, or if maybe you're watching the replays, uh, very, very welcome if I haven't said so yet. You can use the comment area if you have any questions or comments about the things that I'm saying or to each other, then please use the comment area. And also the community is there for you to share your art, share your contact details, share if you've got anything new happening, then uh, that area is for you. But today we are looking at designing your new season. It really is a wonderful time when things to transition from one season to the next. I also find between seasons just in the nature, but also in your business that there's always a fresh start. And uh, I don't know if any of you, maybe you can put in the comments, have scheduled or maybe the summer, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or the winter, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, have been thinking about new plans for the season. And that's usually when you, you're resting or you have time to read or time to do play near work or you just have time to uh, just reflect. I think that's so important as part of our job, actually, as artists. Do you have new plans? If you have anything that you have thought about that you want to do for this new season, just quickly pop them in the comments. Uh, it might be inspiring for someone else to, uh, to hear what your plans are. Then uh, please just briefly share it in the comments. We'd love to know if you have decided to maybe update your website or to new, make a new body of work or maybe to collaborate with someone, start a new collection or maybe change your te technique altogether. That's also possible. Uh, or maybe to use mixed media. What have you decided that you're going to do this new season? Also, if you're watching the replay, you can use the comments in YouTube or uh, uh, let me know through my email. So anyone got plans? It really is a time to start looking ahead. And that's what hopefully this, uh, this series will help you to. How do you do this? Because I get a lot of emails and also uh, doing the coach people say, yes, great, uh, all these plans, but how do I actually systematically start uh, planning things for my business? Because that's what you're building, an art business. And that's what I love to share is that you can turn your art into a business without it being boring. Please use the comment area to share. And it's really about getting into the right frame of mind. And I think a lot of us have some apprehension of planning ahead, like we're intuitive, you want to see it. I know I've got both hands up because I was always like, I needed a feeler to do it. And uh, I've discovered that that hasn't been a very effective business strategy, that you need to plan ahead. You need to have some goals. You need to have some vision. You need to know where you're going. So that you can see whether you are on track and just getting into the right headspace. I think that's where the good starting point is because you're not only an artist, you are also an entrepreneur. Wouldn't it be wonderful just to make our art and actually not worry whether we need to sell it? And that's wonderful. That's called a hobby. And uh, if you're in that space, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes we're jealous of people that just do it as a hobby just when they feel like it. My dad was a hobby artist. He just did it in the holidays and he would go into the African bush and he would be painting and drawing and writing. It was just for fun. But if you want a little bit more, you want to transition and actually earn money with your creativity, it does take a little bit of a shift in your mindset that you also are an entrepreneur. You are someone that you have to build a business. Making your art is not enough. Um, so we need to look past just our uh, creative endeavors. There needs to be some structure and thought behind it. And that's, I've been saying that I think in nearly every session that we've been doing is using uh, or doing something with intent. Very intentional about the steps you're doing, intentional about what you're making. Always with your audience in mind, with the time frame in mind, with the season in mind, with your geographics in mind, with, the, with your passions in mind. So it's something that you're not just doing at the spur of the moment, but it fits into a larger plan, like one big puzzle, adopting that business mindset. And that sometimes takes practice. 
and it doesn't have to be stiff and boring. Uh, running a business can be very creative. It's taking that what you're making and turning it into a revenue stream. How can you earn money with the things that you're doing? That's business. You are trading. You are giving that what you're passionate about. You're putting it down on paper or in clay or in you know, silver, whatever you're making. And how can you turn that in? To a revenue into a business structure that is sustainable and that's what the working arts course is all about because not all ideas are the best ideas and if you don't have gallery representation of course as an entrepreneur you are your own gallerist you are your own curator you are your own marketeer you are the salesperson you are the copywriter you are your customer service person you are doing the logistics when you're sending off your art in the mail to make sure that it arrives in the same in the right place so hopefully not too discouraged and overwhelmed but yes it's not just being the artist you're also an entrepreneur you're running a business um, and you know you're trying to do that uh, without uh, not making your art you want to have find a happy balance and that's the more uh, i find also the artists that are uh, seem to run their businesses effectively have a plan in place because they have learned to time manage, energy manage, and uh, to creative manage, to be able to combine that together and in, in a fluid way. And I totally understand we all have different characters and for one, some of you it will be easier than others. And you need to find what you need to put in place, whether that's a physical agenda or you have a mood board with where you can scribble and write uh, so that you have some kind of idea of where you're going so that you have, um, some perspective of, of the future because having no clear direction and no gear, clear goals no defined vision it really you'll be like a ship that's just going from one uh, wave to the other and you won't be reaching any of your um, your dreams it's just like you are just yeah in Dutch it's called Dobere you just are floating there around and you're not really um, moving forward maybe even going around in circles so really, it's my challenge for you. If you haven't made some kind of structure around your business, uh, have some kind of uh, objective that you're working towards, whether they're short term, just getting those that one painting done or just framing that one piece, that's already a plan. And then set out to do it and then reward yourself when you do do it. And just all those small little plans, achieving them, you'll start reaching your larger goals. And your goals will change depending on where you are in your artist journey. Some of your starters, you have different needs. You know, it's more than maybe the Instagram you want to get down, your profile you want to have uh, a look at and really refine it so that your audience understands or have the profile photo taken. That can be a, a real goal that you have. And then you start working that out. Or when you're emerging, you want to reach more people or more experience. So depending on who you are, so it's not this checklist that's the same for all of us, have a look and see what does your art business need, your artistry need, whether you know, it's your art routine or your um, financial side, whatever area of need your attention and that you need to plan for. Have a listen. And maybe you've been you know, listening to your artist heart uh, this uh, time of rest when you've had vacation. Take notes. Or maybe you have taken notes. How can you turn uh, that into some kind of concrete plan that you can tick off? Because goals need to be clear. And it's, uh, I teach in the course, SMART goals. SMART goals are uh, something very specific. They're measurable, they're attainable, they're relevant to your business, and they are time-based. Something that you can actually measure. So it's not like, yes, I want to be a successful artist. Wonderful, but what are you going to do about it? Because a goal without a plan is just a wish. And I see many wishing artists wishing this, wishing that, but you need to set up some kind of goal and you can design your season. And that's, you know, like you design a painting, you can design your week, you can design your month. And if you look at it that way as an artist, it becomes far more fun than you're looking at as if you're an accountant or you're looking as if you're some kind of a business manager. Look as it, at it as you're composing a painting. It can be really fun and also very dynamic to set up some kind of structure. And there's different kinds of goals. I've written down into three categories. It's the big goal, I call them the BOGs, the big outrageous goals. Then we have our smaller goals. Those are daily goals. Study the studio, go to get the art supplies, uh, 
finish a painting, start a new painting, connect with a buyer. Those are the daily goals that you set and you have SMART goals. Those are goals that, as I mentioned, um, it uh, stands for specific, manageable, attainable, relevant, and time-based goals. These are something that you can concretely say, okay, this is a goal. It's going to help me reach in a month, finish my new collection. You can actually explain it to someone and they understand what you're saying and they can be business and personal. Big outrageous goals. This is an important part uh, of an artist's life. We need to have those larger goals because they are our motivators. Big outrageous goals give you purpose and fuel you forward. And I don't know if any of you have big outrageous goals, but my big outrageous goal for five years was I wanted to immigrate with my husband, Margaret, to Cape Town, South Africa, use the online space to run our business here remotely from uh, this location, being close to friends and family, and also discover the African continent painting and drawing and discovering everything that Africa has to offer. That has something that is has been something that has fueled me for five years. It helped me get up early. It helped me run my business. It helped me look for opportunities. It really was energizing for me. Now we are setting new big outrageous goals because that's how it works. You go step by step. It's not a goal that you can reach overnight. It's something that you have intrinsically sort of drives you. And I don't know if you have those goals if you're not quite sure what they are, just take time to listen to your heart. What is it that seems a little bit unattainable, that seems nearly almost impossible, that you can put into place on a mood board, on your vision board, in your diary, in your sketchbook that you are, that drives and propels you? Do any of you have big outrageous goals? Maybe it is to immigrate, but maybe it is to be a full time artist. Maybe you are still have all kinds of uh, other options. Um, employment and you want to be that full-time working artist maybe you want to be a teacher maybe you want to set up your own studio that looks that's different for all of us but please use the comment area I'd love to uh, hear if you have any BOGs big outrageous goals fueling and propelling you forward it really helps to motivate you to take decisions and move you forward Thank you guys for commenting also about uh, what your plans are for this next season. Uh, sorry to hear that about your shoulder indeed, uh, but hopefully that'll heal and that you get back uh, to doing what you love to do. Um, <laughs> Sue, hello. Sue says her BRG is setting up an artist website. Yes, that could be a huge thing and be terribly overwhelming because there's so many moving parts of a website. But breaking that down into smaller steps, asking help where you uh, you know, where you need it, moving forward, breaking it into smaller increments, and then um, you can celebrate your uh, new website when it's all done. And that uh, is a big BOG. So thanks for sharing. Hi, Dion is, uh, I see Dion is watching. Uh, welcome to the session. What really helps guys is to write down what artistic success looks like to you. And once again, this is different for all of us, because you know, maybe if you just, the word success, you're really thinking of money. So only if I can make money, if only I can support myself. Yes, that is a, a sort of measuring your value and your success, but it can be in far more uh, areas in your life. Just having the peace and calm to create on a, you know, on a consistent basis could mean artistic success. Some people want to uh, be featured in, um, certain uh, magazines or exhibits in certain galleries or have a certain amount of clientele or maybe uh, teaching or it can be so many different things. So take some time these coming weeks or so in these sessions to do some soul searching, really you know, building that relationship with your creativity. That's what I encourage artists to do because that's so much about your inner self and they need to reflect on your outer goals because you can make all these wonderful goals, but if they're not connecting with the inside of who you are, then uh, that's where burnout comes in and it can be one big fiasco. So building that relationship with yourself, knowing you know what, what excites me, what motivates me, why am I doing things that really helps to have that uh, perspective moving forward. So please uh, also share, I'll make a, a post 
next week in the Facebook community that you can share what artistic success looks like to you. And you'll be surprised what people write down. That is really very different for all of us. Maite, thanks for sharing. Maite says, uh, my BOG is making art with a small team, selling it at high end prices, being a full time artist with a thriving business. Hey, Maite, <laughs> that's an amazing BOG. And then breaking that down into smaller steps. What does that mean for you today? How are you going to position yourself? Would encourage you if you haven't done that uh, yet, Maite, is to make a mood board or a Pinterest board or put, put it somewhere that it's visual, that you see it every day. I've made that uh, also about our African dream. Every day I looked at that vision board and I said, well, one day, you know, when things got hard, it's going to happen one day. I need to, you know, position myself moving forward. So that's something that you could, uh, you could do. Reason that the, one of the biggest reasons why artists tell me that they're not making their art is because they feel distracted. I'm so distracted. And it's true. We are living in a day and age where there is so much that distracts us. There is so, so much uh, uh, calling for your attention. There really is a tug and a fight for that. So once we know that, we can acknowledge that because your attention, you'll grow in the area where, what give, where you're giving your attention. And that all has, you know, the next reason I hear artists saying, I don't have time. And that all has to do with what you're giving your attention to because we have, we have time. It's what are we giving our attention to? And then they say, yes, but I don't have the money to be an artist. And that's a direct coloration, coloration, a direct connection with what you're giving your attention to. Because everything that you are nurturing, it's like a flower and a plant. You're giving it water, it's going to be growing. Because you can't do uh, spread your attention on thousands of things. You need to focus on one or two things. And that's what you give your attention to and nurture that's going to develop and grow and become healthy. So it's all about... You know, if you're looking about designing your new season, where are you going to uh, put your attention? What are you going to give your attention to? What is keeping you from moving forward? Exposing those distractions and then finding ways, whether it's with a friend or, you know, getting rid of the remote control or uh, disconnecting uh, uh, for a while so that you can do what you want to do, that it helps you um, staying focused because when you know where you're going you're far more likely to get there and it seems so logical but if you have that goal on your horizon you have that um, you know where you're going more or less kind of you have some kind of perspective than just I need to finish this art piece you can look a little bit further over the horizon the chances are far more likely that you're going to get there and I always tell my students, reverse engineer your dream. So you're starting big. You have this big outrageous goal like Marcia was sharing. And I see Jan is sharing too. He shared his BOG, uh, living, making a living selling art so that I can go, uh, so I give up um, applying for jobs in the IT. I mean, that is just the freedom that, you know, that uh, uh, you're longing for, Jan. Uh, that would be amazing that you can spend all your time making your art. And I think many of you can relate to that. Having that on the horizon, okay, and then reverse engineer your steps. What is it that you need to do today? So you start at the end and then you go to the beginning. Get clear about the big picture, get excited because that's the excitement you need. You need that drive uh, to motivate yourself and then reverse engineer that dream, breaking it down into small manageable steps. And next week we're going to zoom far more in on the smaller picture so now we're doing the big picture next week we're going to go into a small picture of how you actually break down and can set up some concrete steps for your BOGs or even just for your goals for this next season before Christmas what are you going to be doing with your art and your art business start your week with a clear plan and what I do is usually Sunday evening sort of my week starts I look at, over the, at the week and say, okay, what's my priority? And I have, I'm still of the physical <laughs> analog, I'm an analog girl, and I still just have my diary. And I write every Sunday, then I look through my week, what's happening? Do I have appointments uh, going? What's happening? So that I have a brief overview of my week. And then I sort of highlight uh, where I think, okay, this is, I need to prepare ahead of time. 
or this needs a little bit more of my attention so that I not just living day to day, not knowing what's further down the line. So, you know, if you're putting that on paper, uh, that's fine. Or, you know, whatever works for you, uh, that you make a, a clear plan for your week. So your, because time is just flying. And as I said, distractions are around the corner. And then cheerleaders, I really uh, uh, believe that you, you know, you need people around you to support you. Who is there to help you? If planning is not your strength, who can you have some accountability to? Who's there to help you? Do you have a friend that can do that for you? And so that you can just uh, maybe just once a month share your uh, goals with and then or go, you know, find an art coach, uh, someone that you can hold to, some, uh, give you some accountability so that you get, get into a, a flow of work. And that uh, really makes it far more easy and effective. And then the whole fun part of, writing down goals, whether they're for the week or for the month or for the year, you can revisit your goals. Did you achieve them? Were you able to um, do what you said you would do? And it's not to beat yourself over the head, but it's more to see, it, okay, am I realistic with my goal setting? Or maybe my art takes far more time to do than you initially thought. Because in our head, we can do far more than actual uh, you know, practicalities. Because there's so much going on in our lives and our world so that it helps you to revisit your goals. So when you have them on paper, you can sort of make conclusions, revisit them, and then you can revamp and pivot, pivot and grow. So you become a better manager of your time, become a better manager of your energy and become far more realistic, setting realistic expectations. And this helps you later when you want to price your work, when you want to work in commissions, you have a clear idea of your time management. So take notes of that. So that's the BOG, those smaller daily goals and those smart, specific, manageable, attainable, relevant and time-based goals for your business and for your personal life. You've heard me saying this before, if you've been part of my sessions, buy a planner and they are out now. I just got mine. That's my planner for 2022. And I can't wait to spread on my phone board I bought phone board today and uh, it's going on the wall tomorrow so that you can have an idea of your year. And you think, well, that's so far away. It is, but before we know it, it's going to be the 1st of January. And as a business owner, you need to have an idea of your time. So just developing that mindset that it's not just this month, September, and I'll see in October. No, you start looking at your creative year. And I work in the creative cycle. So these are the four quarters. If you are running a business, you already know that each quarter you need to do administration. You need to do bookkeeping. That every quarter you look and see what is your profit margin. You know, what are your losses? Where can you uh, pivot and change? So already getting into that four quarter mindset. And we are now, we haven't entered the uh, fourth quarter, but we are the last month of the third quarter going into the fourth quarter which is an important season for artists, as I already mentioned. So what are you going to be doing these next few months so that you can create momentum in your art and your art business? Write that down in, the, in your journal or as you uh, watch the replay, have a thing so that you can, maybe you can already start and uh, initiate some kind of collaboration or some kind of project or get something in the pipeline so that you can see movement in your art business for these next few months. Because if you're not planning, it's not going to happen. It's not just going to happen. It's something that you need to do intentionally. And then you can already look to next year. So buy a planner like this. It's a plastified, so you can just write with an erasable pen and use different colors. And then write every event that is potentially uh, on the horizon. So maybe there's an art fair in June, maybe you have something at the uh, in September next year, collaboration in the spring, something around Easter, write down also the major holidays on this calendar they already have, all the major holidays they mentioned, and just take a note of them, okay, this is how and what my year looks like, and this is what I can initiate already now, so that I am prepared for the things that lie ahead, because we'll talk more about that next week when he's really zooming in onto our planning and onto our calendars. So goals are not set rules. I mean, as an artist, I know, I speak for myself, we don't want to have all those set rules. We want to have that spontaneity and 
creative expression and but goals that don't have to be stifling that don't, they're not these set uh, rules but they are a beacon to follow so something that will keep you on course that you sort of navigate in the right direction and you can measure your progress and it will help you make choices and especially when you're distracted and then maybe there are many opportunities that come your way having clear goals will keep you on track and say okay i'm not going to say yes to that i'm not going to say yes to that i'm going to choose this and i've seen successful artists what defines them very often also just business people it's their no's that define them not their yeses because we say yes to far more things and they get totally overwhelmed and just so much going on just being able to say no 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 and like yes this aligns with my vision and with my dreams it's going to be, bring me closer to my goals for me and my family, for my art, my art business. I'm going to say yes to that. So it really will help you make those sometimes difficult decisions. Then those goals can be for today, for the week, for the month, for a year, or for the quarter, for one, two, five years. You can make uh, plans uh, in different, um, different increments for different seasons. And especially if you have those BOGs, they are long-term goals and of course you can have all these wonderful goals but you need to turn them into plans actual steps and the step the plan is very specific so you must be able to tell it share it with someone and they must understand what you're doing and you must be able to stay i can tick this off this has been done this plan has been achieved so what can you plan these next few weeks that is going to bring you closer to your goals going to bring you closer to that where you want to be at the end of the year break them down into little steps so reverse engineer your goals into steps break them down into smaller pieces that are manageable because that overwhelm and i know especially when it comes to websites social media everything that needs to happen it can be super overwhelming so we just paralyze and we think no i'm going to be reading a book i'm not going to be doing this i don't know it's too technical uh, I'm not a millennial, uh, leave it. No, you can break it down into steps. And we'll look at that next week, how you can break it down into smaller steps. And so that you can see, dissect actually your uh, plan and what steps you need to take to achieve them into logical, manageable pieces so that it all fits together into that wonderful puzzle. So let me know guys in the comments. I know some of you have been sharing already about your plans for this next three months well it's actually four going towards christmas uh, but you need to of course have everything prepared <laughs> so let me know in the comments i'll be making a pin as well next week so that you can share what are your um what's your plan what what is that you want to see achieved by the end of the year new collection the website collaboration, a new workshop that you're setting up or writing or recording, you want to be more active online, you want to actually exhibit in a physical space, what is it? Also in the replay, if you're hearing this, please put it in the comments area because we really can, it's inspiring to read other people's plans and you think, oh yes, that's, I didn't think of that, I need to be doing that too. So that can be part of your business plan. So you can have clear plans so you know where you're going, and how you're going to get there. And that planning should be part of your art routine. I know it's not very artistic. Sometimes it's like, oh, I just want to make my art. This is part of your art routine because you're not only an artist, you are also an entrepreneur. I've put some uh, resources down. You can have a look at this uh, in the replay uh, of uh, apps for your phone or for your uh, computer that really helps you break down your uh, everything that you need to do into uh, manageable pieces and that you get little notifications or reminders if things need to be done if they're time-based um, but have a look and see and of course there are many others out there my just says a website down or newsletter and blog up and running good goals uh Marcia. look forward to seeing that uh, website uh, done um Marcia, do you have everything you need uh, to achieve those goals do you see any challenges or obstacles that you think oh that's where the it's going to 
be a little bit of a challenge uh, when it comes to your website, newsletter, and your blog. What is your biggest challenge in that area? Please share that in the comments. Love to hear. Um, anyone else have anything uh, planned for the, this next, uh, these next four months as we head towards the end of the year? Then please add it to the comments. Next week, we'll be back with another live session. It's planning your next success. We're going to be talking about artistic success. Uh, what does that look like to you and how are you going to plan for it? What steps are you going to be taking? Breaking it down into smaller increments. Then we're going to be looking at a launch plan in two weeks. How are you going to launch? And launching is like that rocket, making it visible so that people are finding your website. People are interacting with your art. People are understanding who you are and what you're doing. So that's going to be coming up on the 15th and then making art that has more impact. So creating art with more impact because you don't only want people to see you once, people, you want people to remember you. And how do you do that uh, with, and you can use uh, all kinds of tools for that. So that's coming up and then the Q&A at the end of September. Any questions that uh, as we wrap up the session uh, regarding this new season, regarding planning, setting out concrete goals, uh, please share. I'd love to uh, hear from you if you have any questions. Uh, I do go back and read all the comments. Uh, so if there's anything I've missed in the session, then I'll uh, go back and have a look at that. I just says, right now the obstacle is content for my first blog. Keep changing it. Okay, so you are, are you sort of doubting what you should be writing? Or is there too much to write about that you're finding it difficult to just uh, pinpoint the right uh, subjects? Uh, can we help you? Can we brainstorm with you? Uh, just let us know what is the biggest challenge when it comes to uh, finding the right content for your blog. And I know in previous sessions we did like a, a talking about batching, about actually writing all those ideas of what is, what is your audience looking for? What subjects are they looking for? What's interesting for them to read? And then just doing a brain dump, getting all those subjects uh, out, and then you have uh, a list, and you can go back and say, okay, what am I excited about? And how does this fit into my business structure? Because you're all at different seasons, you can write all about different things, you know, depending on where you are and your audience is. Jane asked, what time, what kind of planner am I using? It's a, a German made. You can get it all over the world in Amazon. It's called Stettler, Stettler and it's a, a, the Lumo color, and it's A1, so it's a, quite a nice size. And uh, I sprayed on with spray glue on foam, because uh, this is a little bit um, impractical if you have erasable pens. It will be all over the place. And then I have it on a nice uh, sheet of paper. And then I hang it above my computer in my studio, and I can see, okay, when things come up, I write it down. This is a, a new opening or something that needs to be done. And then I have the different colors. I'm just very much into the colors of so that I can see a glimpse of my board, uh, what different the colors mean and uh, really helps me to stay focused. So hopefully that helps. But I'll do put a screenshot in the feed at the end of the session, Jane. Any more questions, guys? My just says no question, just have to do it. <laughs> There we go, <laughs> action. And, uh, you know, not going for perfection, going for progress, moving forward, because that gives you momentum. And I think very often we want to do things perfectly and uh, then that, that doesn't work and we get demotivated. So yeah, just move, keep moving forward. Uh, if you've got your website up and running, might you please share it in the community. We'd love to uh, uh, look at that with you. And uh, next week, guys, we'll be back, same time, same place. Uh, and uh, wish you a wonderful week and we'll uh, see each other either in the facebook community or in the live sessions um, you're welcome to submit questions if you have questions uh, in the group then we can talk about it here in these sessions okay have a good week a weekend and i'll see you next week bye